I'm Ryan. This is my brother Daniel, and this is Rolls in the Family. Today we are continuing our countdown of our favorite board games of all time with the third installment, which is going to be number 30 through 21. Yeah. As always, links are all down in the description below if they're you want to check any there. of these games up. And if they aren't, it's because Daniel forgot to put them there after yeah, the editing not, process. Yeah, if they're not, make so. sure to comment down below Yeah, and, <laughs> exactly. and, and tag my name about how angry you are. Yes, quality control from yep. our users. Uh, we yep. also want to call out that we have a active contest going with this video series Whoa. where you could win one of the games off of one of our top 50s of your choice. Wait a second. Any of... Any to a certain threshold. I think it's like Rate 80 US print. dollars. Something yeah, like that. So hopefully that doesn't make you too sad to miss <laughs> yeah. out on some uh, big big whale on our wow, list. Wow, that is, that is very generous. I don't remember agreeing to that, but uh, okay. You know, I don't run everything by Dango on this channel, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes we just roll with it. Roll If you want to enter... In the family. In the family. Yep. Yes. Uh, if you want to enter this contest, we have a Google Form link below that'll have all the information on how to enter. You can actually get an entry per video, so this yep. could be your One of uh, third entry at this point, yeah. if you've watched the previous videos. But you do need to know the secret word to enter in that form to get this video's entry, and that secret word is bunnies. Why is As it bunnies, in, Ryan? Killer bunnies was actually the board game that kind of got us into the hobby about Very first game. 15, 16 years ago. Oh my god. Kind of happened across it. And that really opened the door to finding we found Small World and Dominion after that. And it, you know, the rest it was is the history. Gateway and now we're an here completely. Obsession. Yes. There's no turning back. <laughs> There's no turning back. Uh, so if you enter that with that uh, the keyword bunnies, you can get an entry in our contest. I don't think I actually mentioned, we're actually going to pick three winners in that giveaway. So there are going to be oh three different people. Oh, my gosh. Your okay, odds I definitely just didn't agree up. to that. Your I did not agree to that. Went up <laughs> like, whoo. Yeah. Wow. If you weren't going to enter before, now you should. Unbelievable. But that's enough with that. We've got upwards of 20 games to talk oh. about in this segment. So we oh better boy. start it out with Daniel's number 30. Well, here we go. A game that you could win uh, if you win the contest. Uh, my number <laughs> I thought you were telling me I, I could win if we played together. I was like, thanks, Daniel. Oh, no, you've definitely won at this game, <laughs> okay. Ryan. Don't have to be worried about that. Because number 30 goes to the game that Ryan and I have played the most together. Uh, with uh, over 300 plays, I want to say. Over and that goes to... Race for the Galaxy. Uh, we did a review on Race for the Galaxy, actually, so if you uh, are interested in checking that out. But Race for the Galaxy moved up 11 spots for me. But See, it is because we reviewed it. I tell you, when we review a game... We should look through that, yeah. yeah <laughs> we just it it makes us realize we like bump. it more. That's funny. I know. Fantasy Realms might be my number one. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, I think it so... was already on your list, but <laughs> continue, please. <laughs> You're right. Um, Race for the Galaxy is a two-player... Well, I shouldn't say that. It's not actually only two-player. It's just the only way we've played it. Yeah. But you can play with more people. But it's a card game where you're building uh, building a tableau in front of you, uh, and you're racing to... Uh, the game ends once a person plays their 10th card, and then you score things up. 12th card. 12th card. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> is this why you never win Race for the Galaxy? You always thought it was... Wow, I always just stopped kidding. Yeah, Actually, you have a pretty good record lately in that game when we've played. Well, thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Um, that must mean you have a pretty bad record. If I have a pretty, good I mean, just record. we haven't played it that much in recent years. Like oh, okay. those three hundred plays are very backloaded to the uh, early two thousand tens. That's true, but it is a game of uh of your uh, kind of have this tension where you've got cards in your hand. You're trying to decide which cards do I want to play and which cards do I want to use essentially is kind of resources to pay for the cards that you're playing because cards are both things you can play and you have to spend discard cards to pay for the cards that you want to play. So that's kind of where a lot of the tension in the game is. And it plays so fast. I mean, we can, we're at the point now, Ryan, where what we can play in a game in about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. And I, I still think we should do some sort of like video or ranking of like games that deliver, uh, you know, value to time. Yeah. Because Race for the Galaxy is a contender for the best. I mean, 
you feel like you, you you're you have all this progression and you're all the you know you're constantly as you're you're just getting more and more cards you're constantly trying to say okay which ones can i fit into my kind of combo i'm going here my tableau which ones do i want to discard there's different strategies you can take you know with uh kind of more of a military strategy you can go with a kind of consuming uh goods for victory points uh because there's actually multiple ways the game can end you can, game can end by yeah. hitting that 12th card or the game can end if all the victory points in kind of the common pool are taken up and so it's reading kind of what's your opponent doing you know how much time do i have left is a big thing in the game you know can i work towards maybe a bigger card or do i just need to salvage and go quickly man yeah. ryan we've played so many games of race for the galaxy i really it's feel like we such a it's <laughs> such a replayable game because every yeah. game you shuffle that big deck of cards i mean we have all the exp- like first arc of expansions for it and mm-hmm. you just get a unique hand and it's always a unique puzzle of how you're going to do it and when you finish especially if the game's taking 15 minutes it's so easy to be like let's just you know throw it back and play again and get yep. a new hand and yeah it's it's just such great bang for your buck yeah, and it's definitely a game that maybe has a little bit of a learning curve to it. Like, I know, you know, if I was to teach someone now and play against them, it would take them probably quite some time to get up to kind of the level that we're playing at, just because kind of learning what are the common strategies, what, you know, what cards are in the game, what things am I looking for? Uh, but man, once you kind of get a hang of it, it has so much replayability to it. I mean, our how many plays of it that we have, I think, is a testament to that. And the fact that this long li- or this uh this much time later that it's still you know top 30 mm-hmm. like i think that really speaks a lot to the kind of game that it is so in my number 30 race for the galaxy very nice i love me some race for the galaxy <laughs> my number 30 is new with a heavy asterisk next to new um heavy to the list. asterisk how how because how heavy of an asterisk yeah, are we like talking double bold oh my gosh <laughs> um no, it's because it's a kind of reimagining, not a second edition. I mean, it definitely has a lot of changes, but of a previous game that's been on my list forever. And this is Last Bastion. And the previous mm. game is Ghost Stories. And so um, if you're yeah. familiar with either of those games, Last Bastion is kind of takes the Ghost Stories formula, makes some changes to it, rethemes it a little bit. But the core, I mean, it really is. So I think... You know, while my plays that show up for how many times I've played Last Bastion aren't very high, it's with the caveat that I've played Ghost Stories probably 50 times. Yeah. So I have spent a lot of time with this system. And this is about where on my list, I think this might be a few uh, spots down from where Ghost Stories was last year. But man, talk about a game that's held for me in my list, despite, you know, I've had it for so long. It's a cooperative game where you're going around the little inside the city to try to Save off the, f- the threats from the outside and you fight by rolling dice, but you can either do the actions at the places or roll to attack um, the monsters you're adjacent to. And it just has such a nice puzzle to it. And it also has that, the fun excitement that comes with dice rolling in a cooperative game. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just some real truth to, yes, sometimes removing dice can make a game less lucky, but you lose a little bit of this raw excitement. And yeah. it is something we have such great memories with ghost stories of how we like against all odds figured out to set somebody up to have a role to go for it. Yeah. And like the excitement that hinges on that role that was backed by a lot of strategy um, is just such a fun moment uh, to share as a group. I love the changes they made in last bastion. Um, I feel like everything is kind of an improvement over the ghost stories formula um so it's really one that i'm happy to now have in my collection as i realized you know i think this is one that i want to continue to have my collection despite i mean i've had it for over a decade and played consistently over that time um so really a testament again this is we've opened the list with two tried tried and true uh games in our collection this one with Um, a heavy asterisk with a heavy asterisk yes it's very but ghost stories likely would have you yeah. know, if I still had Ghost well, Stories, it would have probably been around a similar spot. I, oh, I was going to ask. I don't, and I don't know if you know this, but do you know where Ghost Stories was in I your think rankings? It, I, I, I checked, and I think it was five ahead. So I think it was my twenty-five last okay, year. Okay, but around. And that's even though I would say I like Last Bastion even a little bit more than Ghost Stories. Ghost Stories probably would have dropped that much anyway. I mean, I've got new games on my right. roster, games that I've moved up. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's it's honestly impressive how much it's held with how many new games have come over the years and yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I think last bastion just 
even more solidifies it in there. So yeah, awesome. Moving on to my number twenty nine, a game that I believe yes, you already mentioned this game uh, in your list. A absolute classic to the industry. A game that many people. Uh, this is their entry point, and that is going to go to Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride. You know, it's funny. I was actually looking at this here, and my initial reaction actually is like, wow, that that feels pretty high for Ticket to Ride. And it is. I mean, yeah. but I think it really is a testament. I mean, it's, Ticket to Ride made both Ryan and my list. It was my 35. I was just checking. So pretty close. And and it really, I mean, a little bit of it is is our list is a combination of like the game, you know, how much do we personally just the enjoyment a game gives us along with how much does a game, you know, work well for, you know, in groups and bring enjoyments to the group. And for me, so much of my enjoyment of the game, to be honest, is how much is the group enjoying it? I could absolutely love a game, but if nobody enjoys playing with me, it's going to be hard for it to be one of my favorite games. Well, Ticket to Ride, it is just such a good entry point for people. And yet it's not just an entry point. It's a game that we're, I don't know how many years later from originally getting Ticket to Ride. And we could sit down right now and I would absolutely play a game. And yeah. I think it's, you know, I'm a bit, we're both big fans of the USA map. I think it's a great one to start with. Obviously the familiarity uh, for the, our viewers that are in the united states maybe not yeah, as familiar yeah. for those of you who aren't but uh but then they have other maps too that have kind of their own variants you know some work they have some that work really well two players i haven't played the nordic uh nordic countries is that the yeah. one i think that's two player specific i haven't actually haven't played that one yet it's still kind of on my radar uh, my wife and i might like that we i know we've enjoyed um uh, uh ticket to ride uh is it india UK? yes Oh, well, India's oh, good too. India's, India's, oh my gosh, just crazy intense. UK and Pennsylvania, you have that map mm -hmm. expansion. Very fun. But so really, I guess my ranking is just like the whole ticket to ride like universe. Yeah. Um, it, it's a game that you, if, if you are entering into the hobby and you're like, where should I start? Man, ticket to ride is just such a great entry point. And it's one that is going to uh, continue to just be fun to play. Uh, as time and time goes on, you know, you got to be okay with a little bit of, of it, there's some conflict in, in terms of like, you know, getting mm -hmm. blocked and stuff. Some people might not like that. And there's a but fair man, amount of luck with just fair amount draw, of luck. destination draw. Right. But I, I think, and you mentioned this in the previous video, but the ability of just like going for it, like, oh, yeah. I'm going to do and, and do this. And it actually balances out with new players because a lot of times new players are maybe a little more conservative. Veterans are more risky and, that sometimes you burns you. And so, you know, it can kind of all kind of yeah. balance out, but yeah, it has stayed so strong. It moved up eight spots for me, wow. which, uh, I think I've just had just multiple plays. Uh, well, I actually I'm trying to think the when was officially the last time I played it, but, uh, I just know the last times I did play it, uh, just went so well with the group. So there you go. 29, Ryan. Very nice. to ride. Yeah, we're at least two data points of people that have played Ticket to Ride for 15 years now and still love it. And, yeah. and, and we're what people that prefer heavier games as far yeah. as a lot of our favorites. Um, so yeah, it's good stuff, and, and it doesn't have to be something you graduate from to other games. I think it's totally worth keeping around. Right. Uh, my, let's see, 29 um, is one I think you talked about um, on the previous list. And it's one that we, we have reviewed. We've talked about a lot how it's just one of our favorite games to teach to new people. It's gone over so well with so many different groups. And that is the Quacks of Quedlinburg. Nice. And this is just such a pure fun game. Um, and I've played it so much that like, you know, in just a few years, I've played it like 40 times or something, which is quite a bit for a game like that. Um, and it's maybe gone down a little bit with kind of just like the novelty factor of it all. And like I've played with a lot of the stuff, but not much like it's held pretty strong. And it's just a game that every time I get it out, you know, mixing up the ingredients and just having a different setup for someone who's played it a lot is just very fun. 
but then everybody drawn at the same time and putting your chips in and pushing your luck and you've got the events that come up and a lot of times the events are kind of fun things that happen. It just creates such a nice group energy um, around the table while still having fun decisions with what ingredients do I buy and just the, we've talked about the dopamine rush of just every chip you draw from that bag and am I going to get them in the right order? Um, it's a game we've had a ton of fun with. Um, I think it's down a little bit for me, seven spots, but honestly, like as gamers that, you know, gravitate more towards some heavier games is like a lot of our favorites. Um, you know, that's still holding pretty strong on this list. Um, so yeah, Quacks Goldenberg, I recommend if you want a game that's really good with just about any kind of group and will appeal to people that kind of are more gamers and people that are non-gamers, I'd recommend checking out our review for Quacks. Um, cause we think it is one of the best options. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think it might quacks might be the like greatest addition to my collection of the past. Who knows how many, I mean, in terms of yeah. just a game that comes in and, and appeals to like the widest range of people, uh, just an absolute joy. Yeah. I uh, actually have not uh, spoken about Quacks yet oh, on my really? list. So uh, if, it gets we'll confusing s- when we record these videos and then we also record like our top plays of the yeah, month and then my reviews. So. I, I, I have talk, no idea I, what we talked about. I actually about. want it was in my last top plays that I, okay. that I talked about it. There um, we go. And yeah, teaser. I also very enjoy, very much enjoy Quacks. So we'll just leave it at that. But there um, you go. good stuff, Ryan. Going to my number 28, we have a new game to the list and a game that is extremely popular currently in the board game world so popular that it has climbed all the way to the top spot of board game geek and that is brass of birmingham i wondered if this would honestly make it onto your list at all, because you haven't played it that much. Yeah. Um, So I have played it, uh, I think a few times here. I don't have it actually right in front of me. Two or three times. Um, Yeah. And it's so interesting in that game, because, you know, in the game, you kind of have these uh, two different uh, phases, or not phases, like almost halves to the game, you know, where the first one you're like uh building kind of this whole all these uh links out and whatnot and then in the second half it's then we're you're kind of doesn't it switch from like yeah, the, the, so the links all disappear but right. any any level two or higher buildings that were out stay right so the the rails era is kind of seeded with the remains of the canal era which is just a very mm-hmm. interesting point in the game right oh so the canal era is first yeah so the canal era is first i see so i had it backwards yeah it's been a little while since i played so we're we're refreshing here um but so interesting how like it's you know i almost think of the game i was just talking about ticket to ride you know you're kind of just building your thing well this one it's like you're building it out but but you know that it's gonna then get taken off and you're gonna be Mm -hmm. switching to the to the rails after that and so you're trying to get things to level two buildings um just a really kind of unique game in the in the mechanics that it has i like how with the cards that you have it kind of gives you some uh you know it's not just go anywhere um yeah. and it could give you some, some like analysis paralysis but you're limited and so it's kind of you know i know both of us like kind of that making the best of what you have and whatnot and then just the whole market is yeah. so fascinating in that game because you know the way things so you know suddenly uh one person does one thing and now ship you know you getting this resource you know there it uh it's yeah. like something yeah, really great for you someone eats up like a bunch of coal from the market you yeah. might have had this whole other plan and suddenly it's like but i could build a coal mine and yeah. like if it's connected it immediately sells all sell of it all the stuff. flips my tile yeah there's few games that like at least in my collection that have that level of just like the things other players are doing on the shared map can just present these new opportunities that'll completely change how you, your priorities. And that's what makes it such a dynamic fun game. And I think part of the reason it's so high for people is Mm -hmm. just because that's a very engaging gameplay experience when every time it goes around the table, it really could have shifted in a way that you're like, Oh, actually this is really interesting. I could actually do this now. Maybe that's even better. 
and it, it gives you those opportunities for to feel clever with plays. Right. Yeah. So I I was kind of honestly surprised because you know I've only played it a few times, but I was thinking back on the plays. I was like, the whole time I'm playing, I'm just like, oh wow, like that's interesting. Okay, well. Well, look at that opportunity now. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's just I, I think that I mean, the reason it's so popular, like you were saying, is just it's it creates these just interesting decisions. I will say it's one of those games that I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm sure the like best players at it could just wipe the floor oh, yeah. with like I still have like very little uh yeah, we don't know confidence what <laughs> in what i'm doing in that game i'm still learning it but the i've it, i've been having a fun time exploring it so 28 brass birmingham nice my 28 is absolutely nothing like brass birmingham in <laughs> fact it's really nothing like anything else like anything it's one else? of the most unique wow. games i have um and it's a hard one to get to the table. twister it's, yeah no no that's much higher in the list <laughs> no you just wait <laughs> um twister legacy coming up um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but this is one that's hard to get to the table i need the right group it's long but it stays in my collection because i enjoy it a lot and it's such a unique experience and this is millennium blades hmm. this is a game where you are not playing and there's games that are collectible card games, if you think of like Magic of the Gathering or these types of games. But in Millennium Blades, you are playing a person who is playing a collectible card game. So in the Very game, meta. you are getting money. You are spending money in real time to buy booster packs from the market to add cards to your collection. And everybody in real time is trying to build a deck. It's a deck of, you know, nine cards or something. Um and then also build these collections that you can sell because the big part of it is like making money in the game. Um, well, I guess you get points for like the, the collections, the end game yeah. points. And so like your points at the end of the game, it's a combination of like how well did you do in the three tournaments with your deck that you built? Because you actually duel the other players or maybe duel isn't the right word since there can be more than two people. But, right. you know, you all play against each other with your decks. Yeah. And then you but you also are getting points for these collections you've built and other things. And it just, for people who enjoy the lots of text on cards, like, you you know, lots of unique cards with abilities, and I want to find the combos and find which ones could work together, like, this is such a fun exercise in that. Yeah. And just, like, there's nothing like it. Now, people that don't like this, this could be your worst nightmare Oh, my gosh, game. you're... <laughs> this might be is it would this be your wife's least favorite yes, game? Yes, we, we've determined my wife this. She doesn't like any kind of like text on cards having <laughs> to like think about that. So the complicated stuff. So this is here, do it in real time with tons of <laughs> yeah. it'd be a nightmare. Um but I I love it. Um I have to be in the right mood. Like it's not a game that I always <laughs> feel like bringing out. Um, but man, there's nothing like it. And I have a ton of content for it because I have the original game along with the first big expansion and then uh, the new like collusion Kickstarter, which is fun because every game you put in which sets you're using. And so I have so many sets to pick from. So you always have kind of different cards in play. Um, like I said, just a really unique game. Um, I think it, let's see, it's actually gone up eight spots. Oh, look at that. It went up eight Whoa. spots, which I'm I don't either. think I even played it in the last year. I oh. played it like a little over a year ago, I think. Yeah. Um, but maybe that's just a sign I'm itching to play it. Yeah, Ryan um, when I think is about it, itching uh, over there. Yeah. There so you there go. you go. Millennium Blade. Too bad is I'm not there to scratch that itch. Eight. Yeah. Uh, two things. Uh, first, you got me thinking, what's the plural of dual? Uh, is there, or like the <laughs> go to three? Is there a word for that? Uh, you I mentioned. Please dual. leave in the comments below. Long, if there is a, if there is something for a th- in past dual for three people, please let me know. Um, and that'll, maybe that'll be our word for the next video. <laughs> uh, and then the, uh, and then the uh, second thing is this game I absolutely love. I mean, just love this game but I cannot decide if I want to own it because it's yeah. like, you know, you just have to have the right people and, you do. It, and it's not the, cheap and it's not cheap. It's long, but if you have the right people, Oh my goodness, this is an experience. It like delivers, you know, for, for the people who love, like, you know, maybe grew up on collecting cards. It's like, wait, so I get a game where I just get to do this in real yeah. time. 
And people who like that kind of wheeling and dealing. Yeah. Oh, you, my gosh. Because you're like getting if, stuff. Which and then I you can love. Like put a card on the market to buying sell Buying and selling. And... You're getting packs. You win the tournament. Don't, don't you like get like a get something? Well, every for... tournament, everybody gets yeah. like their promo for participating. Promo in I mean, term. it is a brilliant just i and it's it's like it's one thing amazing to have that, well i'll just say real quick yeah. it's, it's it's amazing to like have that idea you know because i could see me thinking imagine a game where like you're actually doing this yeah yeah but the fact that they actually took that idea and made a really good implementation of it yeah. is incredible to me yeah i was gonna say it's amazing this game exists it like <laughs> yeah. feels like a game that shouldn't exist <laughs> if you love collectible cards kudos to uh i think it's stuff, brad so. from level 99 uh, games man i love you, know, you brad pulled it off. Great job. good stuff uh yes yeah, so that's my uh 28 okay Onward and upward yeah my uh so we're moving on to 27 here we've got another new game and it might be the most recent big riser in terms of it just recently just uh skyrocketed because mm. i played it for the first time recently and a game that has been mentioned already in this video not really with a heavy asterisk and that is last bastion wow man I you know. really enjoyed the play we had of this i really well and again it's it's t- yeah so, you played ghost stories so ghost lot. stories i already i already was like man I, I want to own ghost stories eventually because like Ryan said, it, it, it almost takes like what I love about like an elder tour, you know, these uh, games where and we, we enjoy games that deliver big moments with rolling dice and ghost stories just refines that or well, so ghost stories originally refine that down into just this concise, quick experience of that and it mm-hmm. almost always delivers well sometimes you lose badly but like a lot of times it delivers just crazy moments because it's a really hard game and we like them like that well playing last bastion just improved so many things of it for me uh it i like just the aesthetic improvements that it has it I mean it just looks awesome on the table um it fixed some of the problems where like you couldn't you know if you used one player power no one could use the other one well now yeah, yeah it completely does that we also it also fixed the issue of like there would be some locations that in ghost stories we just didn't use really that much and they were kind of the main ones that we went to well this one we we really looked at them all and we're like man i can see a situation where i would use any one of these and so it feels really balanced um yeah it it took a game that i already knew i wanted to own and elevated it yeah. and 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 so it's a must have for me and so and that's why i feel like it just even after playing it once i was like oh my goodness this this is going to be high there on my list because uh to deliver it delivers so much in I think we play it in maybe an hour and a half. It's usually about 40, 45 minutes oh, to an hour. Yeah. Okay, okay, gotcha. Because so that was one my, of our actual complaints yeah, with the White Moon expansion for Ghost made Stories. It is oftentimes it pushed it to an hour and a half. Yeah, I wonder if that's what I was thinking. Just a little long of. for that yeah, game. Yeah, so, so, oh my gosh, wow. Uh, I might, should have been even higher. No, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, getting that experience in 45 minutes to an hour is so great. And to, yeah. um, yeah, it's one that Ryan and I have complained isn't as a uh, hasn't ha- you know didn't sell as well as you yeah. Know, when maybe I got the new we edition, I had so much appreciation for how good of a job they did with this yeah. Ghost Stories reboot and the whole production. And so like, yeah, we'll we'll sing its praises. You, the viewer, well, should check out Last Bastion because it deserves a little bit more attention than it's getting. Link. Yes, and while you're there, the subscribe and, and the, the subscribe. <laughs> Perfect. Just like we scripted. we planned that. <laughs> You're up, Ryan. <laughs> uh, okay, we're on twenty-seven. Yeah. Alrighty. This is one that I put in a similar category to Brass with how I feel about it, which is these kinds of games where it's so much about the interesting way the shared board state evolves as everybody's playing and everybody's kind of interacting with this. It's almost like an organism, right? That's like shifting and like, okay, what are the plays I can make? Mm. This is a newer edition of a very popular game from a very popular designer. This is Yellow in Yangtze? Yangtze? Who knows? Yanks. Please comment below. <laughs> Follow the corrections yeah, to our channel. <laughs> um, this is a reboot of Tigris and Euphrates, wow. which came back a long this time ago. High. I haven't actually played 
Tigris and Euphrates. But when I researched, Yell and Yangtze felt like a better fit for my group of being a little bit more maybe forgiving, casual, not just like, I think Tigris and Euphrates, you can have moves where like, you know, somebody gets absolutely just <laughs> destroyed at the end of the game. You know, it's that. And some yeah. people really like that. But I was like, I think I'll get it to the table more. Um, just such an interesting, the core system's so brilliant, um, from Reiner Knizia, one of the most prolific designers, um, of laying down these tiles and the colored tile, whatever like city or group it's a part of is going to give a point of that color to whoever has that leader of that color. And ultimately at the end of the game, it's your lowest color that scores. So you want to be as evenly rounded as possible, but then there's all of this, kind of conflict between who has the leaders in each of these areas. Because if you have your blue leader there, I can play my blue leader into there, but that immediately causes, I think they're called revolts in Yellow and Yangtze, mm -hmm. where we now have to basically, you know, bid, um, I think they're the black governor tiles to see which one of us is going to get to stay after this revolt as the blue one there. And similarly, if you play a tile that connects two states and there's, you know, leaders that are in conflict because there was a red leader or a black leader in both sides. You have to do this big war where everybody bids and like one side is going to lose all of theirs. And so the, the way that those can shift something, yeah. not to mention that after those wars, like a lot of the red uh, army tiles get removed, which sometimes removing it, oh, and it breaks it into different state. states. Yeah. yeah, it's just such an interesting thing to watch it Un, you know, unravel throughout the game and kind of just look for opportunity of where can I, there's a lot of opportunity for very clever plays similar to brass, largely because you get two actions on your turn and like the flexibility of those actions, you can do some really clever things. I know an example we've seen lately is you, if you have two blue tiles, you can do what's called a uh, peasant's revolt or riot, which actually lets you remove a tile from the board. And so you can do like an interesting thing where you remove a tile that now uh, the leader, the green leader is no longer connected to the state it was in. Now I can go in with my green leader and not even be in conflict to take it, you know, because yeah. you're, they're no longer together. There's so many opportunities for things like that. I have a horrible track record in this game. I think I've won like once out of like 15 or something, mm. but I have a great time with it every single time. Happy to have it in my collection. Too bad that, Something with the, I think, is it Grail Games or whatever edition I have, uh, there was like a breach of contract and now that edition is like not ever going to be available again. Um, there was a new Kickstarter for a new version called Huang or something. They changed the name. So I think the game is going to be available again under a new wow. aesthetic. But I will be happily keeping my copy of Yellen. Yeah, Nancy that's like a collector's collection. item now. I know. Please. I'm going to find that I could sell it for yeah. a pretty penny. Yeah, that is a it is a very interesting game. It didn't make my list, but I I totally agree that watching the board state, it's it's like you're playing the game and then you're also just watching and like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. And watching things change, it is fascinating. Good stuff, Ryan. We're gonna go to a, my number twenty six here. Dropped fourteen spots, and I think there is some reason behind it, um, which is quite a bit of spots when you think about it, this like yeah. high in the list. But uh, that is gonna go to a feast for Odin. Wow. Um, a feast Actually, for I know. I know why this is dropped. I could tell you why this is dropped. <laughs> well, it doesn't. It doesn't help that your wife doesn't enjoy it as much as she yes. used to or, or thought that. Yeah. She did. Which again, I mean, <laughs> whether that's you know fair or not, that does play yeah. into like my my rankings. But um, well, I'll first say what I what I like about Feast for Odin because it really is a a really really cool fun game. I mean, you're uh you're you playing, you know, worker placement with a ton of actions. You're just, you know, there's so many actions that you can go to and they each kind of have like a tier level or there's like these columns for the actions. So you could do the most powerful one at, at, you know, the fourth column and kind of, and what's cool is the third and fourth column. I think it's the third lets you draw a card if you play there and the fourth lets you play. So it's, it's this whole trying you're kind of looking at the board and trying to see how can you maximize the amount of workers that you have and you actually get more workers as the game goes on. So it gets even more just interesting out there on the board. Um, but then you have this personal board that you're ultimately trying to uh, get these shapes to fill out your board and you have to fill it out from 
the bottom left moving up because to get to the next income, you have to fill in all the squares that are kind of to the left and below of the number. And so you're kind of trying to get your, the main thing you're trying to do is get your income up because that allows you to do more things and ultimately fill your board and get islands and do stuff yeah. like that. I mean, there's so much to the game um, and it's a very, very, very fun worker placement engine builder um, I, I think of a few reasons it's it's dropped for me. Yes, my wife uh, has not enjoyed it as much. I think just because it's so open, it's kind of very sandboxy. You can kind of just, you know, go wherever you want. Now, I would have loved if the cards kind of helped direct you. Um, even but more than my do. second complaint of the game is the cards are very meh like they it's kind of like oh that's nice if that card fits into what i'm already doing but very mm. rarely are you like driving a whole strategy off of like a single card sometimes happens but not super often um so i i think the expansion is fantastic for it um especially mm -hmm. actually at two player it it, it really helps uh, constrict the board a little bit um and then they also ha added the thing i i like like this and also don't like it you can discard a card to get a uh get a like a victory point marker this which point. is nice in that those cards that are pointless for you you can actually get something for them but also that just feels like a lame mechanic um yeah i'd rather play cards than i'd rather just, just like play cards because they're cool and interesting but there's a it's a it's a big game. It takes a long time to play, but if you you know it definitely if you like worker placement games, uh, engine building with kind of a polyomino, you know if you're trying to fit all these things together. Uh, Feast for Odin is a really enjoyable one and definitely worth checking out the expansion if you like the game as well. Yeah, yep, it's a big sandbox design uh, or and a kitchen sink design really. Like just like everything mm. is thrown in. It's such a big game, but it's one yeah. that we. We have a lot of fun playing that one. Yeah. My 26 is up, I believe, 12 spots. Ooh, I think babe. some of that has to do with an expansion um, that I got for it. And this is Space Base. And this is one that I think surprised oh, me how high it was. Goodness, Ryan. But I think I've had opportunities to play it several times Love in the, the past year. Points. And with the new... Uh, shy pluto expansion that i basically just opened and threw everything in which adds this fun new you get these ship resources that you can get these little dice that you get to roll every other person's turn to try to hit on things which is such a silly but fun thing um it just the experience i have with it it's just a really addictively fun game to have the dice being rolled every time and seeing which ones you hit and then being able to customize what rewards you're getting for different die results. I love with some of the new cards that are in the game and that the expansion added the just different things you can do as far as setting things up to trigger in different ways or move cards around or some of the abilities that you charge up and then use. There's just enough there that it's, you know, it's not too simple. Um, there's enough to kind of chew on, but then the core experience is so kind of light, honestly, as it's going like, it's a good one to play when we don't want to think too hard, but it's mm -hmm. like, you want to just like have fun throwing dice. And, you know, if you like that excitement of just like the, it's almost like that gambling thing of yeah, like, what are the results going to be? If you have a gambling addiction, right after you call our helpline, you know, yes. buy space space, Link in description. it's a healthier outlet. Uh, um, but yeah, it's just, I, I think I'm just realizing in in the category it fits as far as player count up to five players and the time, it just is really, really strong for me um, in how much I enjoy playing it. We'll see if that holds as the, you know, the expansion isn't so fresh. Um, although they just kickstarted a new expansion. That's what I've been asking from. They keep doing all these like weird campaign expansions. I'm like, I don't want to play space space the campaign but the no. new one that they released in the kickstarter is literally just more ship cards with like Thanks. base abilities that you can just throw in and it's like that's what i want is just right. more variety um wow so yeah space space my 26 that is i mean i knew i know you like that game i really like that game i'm shocked it's that high to be honest that's yeah. a that says a lot about it awesome my uh number 25 here as game moved up 13 spots, and there's definitely a reason for it. It's new to my collection, and this version is new to both of us. And that is Dungeon Fighter. 
Uh, yeah. So Ryan, we've actually had done Ryan's own dungeon fighter for uh, quite some time now, actually, and we've had uh, we've played a lot of games of of dungeon fighter. We're, we're OG uh, dungeon we fighters. Are, we like, are. I think we got it in two thousand nine when it that, came out. That's when it came out. Okay, I think so. yeah. And we've played it a lot since. We've gotten good at it, and and really, in our opinion, a very underrated game, especially uh, if you you know enjoy have a group that you know enjoys. I mean, most people enjoy throwing dice. Like that's just a a fun mechanic. And in this game, you're a cooperative. You're bouncing dice off the table onto this target to try to go through this dungeon crawler and and defeat enemies and get to the final boss. And what's fun is the enemies that you face make you do trick shots. So you're throwing dice under your legs you're you know having to do a off the box shot i mean it, it definitely creates those opportunities that we love for amazing moments of like oh my gosh how did you, you know you or you hit the bullseye off of the box yeah. like unbelievable uh, so we love games that deliver stuff like that the collector's edition is great it really mm-hmm. is a great uh, implementation of it i mean and just, really the the second edition in general like even right, if you're not yeah. going to get the collector's edition like if you just get the second edition sets and then expand it with additional sets right that's a good point yeah, yeah and and so it there's just tons of you know i was a little unsure like okay they had all these crazy things like are they actually going to improve the experience but it's so streamlined in how it adds the various uh, elements in and so you've got you know throwing out of a cup you've got a you're bouncing you know they've got different dice like metal a metal die uh, a big like foam die you know just all this crazy stuff that just makes these interesting situations and and the collector's edition just adds even more variety into all of that we've had so many great games of dungeon fighter it works for a lot of people like because you don't really have to there's not many rules you have to teach you can kind of teach the game as you go to be honest like teach a few things up front really the only killer for this game that i've experienced is if people are just really bad (laughs) which can happen so uh that's maybe something if you're horrible at like uh, dexterous skill and you don't like the pressure of the moment you know, right? everyone's watching you and oh did you yeah. really just throw the die across the room come on come on right those some of those funny <laughs> moments like depending on the setting because like true. If you we've have the talked right about how dungeon yeah. fighter almost can feel like a party game a lot of times it very much playing. does have that vibe yeah. um and sometimes those are the funniest moments in party games it's that's true like so maybe ep- you do want failures. you need to always yeah. yeah make sure you always get that one guy who's horrible at it i mean that's yeah. why i play with ryan I have nothing to say to that. <laughs> nothing to say. My 25 say, Dungeon Fighter. My, my wittiness is is uh, falling behind yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah, well, it's because your uh, it's because your pride just took a hit. You. Uh... Yeah, it hurt, Daniel. It hurt, Daniel. <laughs> I've had nothing but nice things to say. <laughs> I'll be sure to work some hate into my next pick, my number 25. This I think already showed up on your list, though. I'm going to doubt myself every time I say uh, that. I'll, now. I'll confirm or deny. Uh, it. This is I'm just going to say it. Keyforge. It did show up um, on my list. Yes. This is a very interesting game in the genre of, I w- I'll say collectible card games, deck building, dueling style games as far as the gameplay. But the huge difference with Keyforge is you buy a unique deck that can never be changed or you never do any deck building. And it's guaranteed to be unique in the whole world as far as what cards are in it and what the name of it is. And that is such, uh, for the style of, players we are for these types of games that's so amazing because yeah. we're the, we're very casual players that we we enjoy this style of game but i'm not gonna you know be someone who's going to tournaments or doing any yeah. kind of like really getting into the organized scene but give me some decks that i can just pull out random decks and play casually with right. somebody or we've actually run two big tournament days with eight people where we did pool play and then a double elimination tournament where everybody has the same deck throughout the day. And honestly, those elevate this on my list. Like knowing that that game can do that experience and work so well for it. Mm -hmm. Um, just such a memorable experience. But even if you just boil it down to a single game of Keyforge and just the mechanisms, like take even out like the whole unique deck concept, which I Mm -hmm. think tends to be what people talk about Keyforge. I think Richard Garfield, which I didn't mention, it's the same guy that made Magic the Gathering that has designed mm-hmm. Keyforge. Really some clever stuff going on in Keyforge. Specifically the whole, your, your deck is three different houses and on any given turn, you can only pick one of them to do anything with, to play, to activate. 
So many interesting decisions from that. Because I could have a strong board state with one house, but my hand isn't strong in that house. Am I willing to push my board state, but I'm not going to get to draw many cards because I'm clogged up with other houses and vice versa. And sometimes you're very even across them, but it's like, what's, you know, and valuing how valuable is it? Like, I'm not good in this house, but it would allow me to clear a lot out of my hand to get new cards. Like how valuable is that right now? Mm -hmm. Um, Just love it. I love that the emphasis isn't on killing your opponent. You know, it's the first to forge three keys. Any attacking of the opponent is more just like to be defensive against them pursuing that goal. And so you're less likely to get into situations with, I think other games that are more attacking where like one player is just overwhelming the others. It can still happen. We're like, I mean, I've had a game. I I actually remember us playing against each other where I think the whole game, you, you had all these monsters, all this stuff, but I was just doing these sneaky little things and Mm -hmm. stealing and, and doing some stuff. And, and I ended up winning the game and and it was like, wow, you know, it's not just who can have the most and overpower. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways to, to win in it. And it's a swingy game. I mean, there's cards that'll be like, destroy all creatures, you know? Yeah. And, the, and so like, you have to be a little okay with like, and it makes some of the exciting swings in the game of you kind of might feel like you're always in it. Um, but I've had a lot of fun with Keyforge. I like just having a bunch of decks and pulling it out casually. Um, yeah. and it's yeah, pretty high on my list. It's, it's actually down 11 spots. So it was really high. Hold- last yeah, year i did not realize um, it was that <laughs> last year but geez. yeah it's one of my favorite yeah. games in this in this genre and the fact that it's so easy to pull out and play well, i was gonna say the other reason i think both of us really like the not you're not going and searching for cards to build a deck but you just kind of get handed this deck is we're people that very much like games where we are reacting to what we're given you know just yeah. give me like and, and don't give me an op like this this open sandbox, but instead give me cons- a constricted set of resources, and then how can I maximize that? Yeah. And and that's what's so fun in Key Forge is, especially when you do those tournaments and you play a deck over and over again, because you really start to learn your resources in this deck and yeah. thinking, okay, what is the best way I can play this? Mm-hmm. Uh, totally agree. Yeah, and you got some new stuff for it with the recent I do. Uh, I, from the new was that a Kickstarter? Kickstarter. Yeah, because yeah, so. now. Yeah, it's now owned by Ghost Galaxy Games with Christian Peterson, who originally signed it at Fantasy Flight. So nice. I think Keyforge is in good hands moving forward. There you go. Awesome. Uh, we are going to move to my 24, which is a, another game that is only cards and has moved up 16 spots oh, for wow. me. And yet it's not new. It's been around for a long time, but I just have gotten some time to play it. Absolutely love it. And that's going to go to Teach You. Tichu is by far my favorite just card game in terms of like, yeah, like, a, like tra- a, more traditional. A, a traditional. I mean, it's basically a traditional deck of cards with four special cards added into it mm-hmm. and you play two V two and it is just brilliant. And you know, you're, you're, it's a very standard game in terms of like your, you know, you're playing, uh, what, what's that call where you're playing? A climbing like, game. It's a climbing it's, game. Yeah. yeah. So if I play a single, you got to play a single, that's higher. If I play a run, you got to play a run, that's higher. That whole thing. And that's all great. Um, but it's got this whole interesting thing where you're, you know, whoever goes out first gets the, is it the tricks of the, I always get these mixed yeah, up. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. prize that who gets yeah. the tricks who, and then the opponent gets the hand of the last place person. Long story yeah. short, going out first gets you uh, in by far mm. in the best position. And so all that matters is that either you or your partner go out first. That's really what you're shooting for. Yeah. And so at the start of the g- round, you get dealt your full hand. The entire deck gets dealt out between the four of you. And then you end up passing a card to each person and you're trying to read do I have the hand that I think can go out first or is my hand not very good? And I'm going to hope my partner does because you can't talk to each other. You're all, everything's just reading what's happening based off what's played. And I think what's so brilliant about teach you is again, it's not, you know, you, you just have to do with what you have. And sometimes you get a hand and it's amazing. And in the game, you can call teach you, which is betting a hundred points that you're going to go out first, which then is crazy because then everyone's going at you and trying to block you and going all out to stop you. So that's a really fun mechanic. But then sometimes you get dealt a hand and you're like, this is horrible. How am I going to, and you're in the, it's a game where so much of the skill in it is knowing when to play. Because if I just play all, if I just 
play every single time all my high cards, I'm going to be stuck with low cards and, and yeah. go out last. And so figuring out the timing and, and what's the, and how can I help my partner? That whole interaction, man, it is so much fun. We've had a, a couple that we got to play this with quite a few, uh, quite a few times the past few years and whatnot and it, it just by far in terms of a traditional card game climbing game absolutely love it uh yeah that is my 24th teach you the uh, most stuff. popular most popular game in uh they say on the back like how many people yeah. in asia i'm pretty sure every i day. read that like everything on the back is like a complete lie oh my gosh yeah or at least like it's no not longer. actually teach you it's maybe like some other game wow that's like kind of like teach you that's that is actually yeah. unbelievable yeah take it off the list we that's do awesome. not support that on this channel yeah. for the record that is unbelievable okay ryan all righty we're at 24 my 24 is a game that is not only cards but it's m- Mostly. It, it's card-driven, largely. This is a game that is on the short list of games that Daniel owned first, and I decided ended oh, okay. up being ones that I wanted to own. And this is a very, very popular game. One of the most popular games. Uh, it took the longest for me to play it. Like I, I still hadn't tried it, despite it being so popular until recent years. This is Wingspan. Oh, okay. Right. Daniel thinks something else. I was off on that one. Uh, yes, Wingspan, very, very popular game of all the cards have unique birds, and you're playing them into the different habitats to kind of do this engine building and find combos to try to score the most points. Um, I I love these styles of games. We've talked about games like Race for the Galaxy. Yeah, there's probably going to be others on the list that kind of fall into this category of lots of unique cards. You're drawing them. You're looking for combos. Given these cards, every time you play, you're going to see different ones. And Wingspan just has such a clean system. Like that system of like the three habitats that are for upgrading your food, upgrading your egg production, upgrading your card draw is just so interesting how that layers. Like every bird you decide to play is I'm playing this for what this bird does for me, but mm-hmm. I'm also choosing which habitat I'm you know upgrading mm-hmm. my ability in. Um, I've just had such a good time with it and adding in some expansions now, like it's the perfect game to expand with more birds and yeah, just like they're doing more abilities. Um, and it keeps it at a pretty, uh, short play time as far as it's kind of in that medium category of like, it's not probably going to be longer than an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I've really enjoyed my play so far, and it's it's pretty high on my list for it's I guess of new games because this I didn't own it as of when I did my list last year. It's my third highest of any new game this uh, this year. Wow! Um, and I'm excited to expand it more, play it more. Um, yeah, yeah. I've also found it's one that is uh, pretty easy to teach to people, especially just because there's four. There's really four options on your turn. You know, yeah, the four actions. So yes, very very good choice, Ryan. Uh, awesome stuff. I'm going to be coming in now, my 23, a new game to the list. You might actually even be surprised how high this one went. It's not, uh, it's not, I don't own it. I will own it. Uh, Ryan owns it. And that goes to Cascadia. Wow. That's really high. Isn't that crazy? That's actually now again. Insane. This see here's what's hard about these lists is you you make them after you know it's a very much yeah. it's a point in time. My last game of Cascadia was phenomenal. Yeah, it yeah. was like everything worked, and so that's probably a really uh, poor representation. But I that's will honestly sit. part of why it's fun to do year over year. Like we'll get yeah, to see next year. Right. Like how much does it move? But I will say, it's it's just so i just love what it does you know it gives the you know the different scoring for the for the different animals but but really what what it is for me and it's such a simple mechanic is the whole the two row drafting Mm -hmm. the the you where you're you're drafting up a tile to put into your environment and then you're drafting an animal to place somewhere in your environment and that just makes you think like, OK, how do I love ma- games that let me like just trying to like maximize where I position things. And sometimes you're stuck and you can't do it perfectly, but you're really trying to last game. It like worked out perfectly, which was just amazing. But it's so simple and it it, it just yeah. it's it's so accessible. And yet I find the strategy like wait, I love the fact that it combines such simple accessibility with strategy 
to where I'm thinking hard. Like I'm yeah, like, and, and, you, and you can kind of go as hard as you want to, you know, if you, if you don't have to think that hard, but if you yeah. want to really, you know, what is the best way I can do this and position myself for the future and, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I was, I was really shocked how high it went for me. It's, uh, not my highest new game, uh, but it's in, it's one of the highest and, uh, yeah, just have absolutely enjoyed wow. my plays of it. Um, Especially the last one. So yes, it will be interesting yeah, to see yeah. what goes last year. I, if I'm being honest, might drop a little bit, but at this point, Cascadia is is one of my favorite games. Wow, very nice. Yeah, the the combination of the paired drafting with then the paired puzzle because it's like yes. two puzzles laid on top of each other with the terrain yep. and then the animals. It, yeah, it comes together really well. I enjoy Cascadia a lot. I'm I'm amazed it's so high on your list. It actually is my 54. It missed. Oh, my list. Ryan, just sell so. it to me. And I'm the one that has it. <laughs> yeah. Again, my last play was so much. It's like that's what's hard. It's your last. It's your last feeling. And yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. That was some of the most fun I've had in like yeah. a game. Like that was just um, that was incredible. So there you go. There if you, you want to hear more about Daniel's uh, Cascadia play, it's in one of our top plays videos recently. <laughs> you have the. That's month. true. Yeah, you can go look at pictures of it. Yeah. yeah. If if this wasn't enough, if you and yeah. Daniel just excited about Cascadia. Ugh. Oh man, twenty three. Oh man, we're coming up on an hour here, buddy. Time to knock out a few more games. 23 is my favorite, I think, dexterity game of all time. And I like dexterity games quite a bit. And it's favorite by a pretty, pretty large margin. And it's one I always knew going back to, you know, 12 years ago. Not always, but as of 12 years ago, I was like, eventually this game will be in my collection. I'm just not in the right season of life yet. But once I got older, had my own home, I finally got a crokinole board. Wow. And this is, is another high. one of those Woo. games that like, you know, maybe it doesn't feel like a board game, but it is a tabletop game. You pull it out and you, you know, play it. And I have just had such good experiences with crokinole, especially playing two player. You know, that's when it's really at its best, this head to head. And you're, you're flicking discs and trying to make them into the inner ring or even make it in the circle um the hole in the middle but it's got this brilliant mechanism of if your opponent has any discs out you have to hit one of your opponent's discs to be a legal shot and just the interesting boards that come out of that and just the nice two player you get into this rhythm of you get to just keep taking shots and it just has such an addictive quality that's also so easy to just like hang out and talk with someone while playing. Like I've enjoyed just like, you're just kind of hanging out and it's casual, but it's still this very competitive, um, fun game. I actually think the four player variant two V two is better than I thought it was going to be because everybody kind of talks about just the one V one. Um, but I've had great times with that, um, playing that way. So one, I'm really, really glad to have it. My collection, um, yeah, it's one that I wouldn't be surprised if over time becomes one of my most played games of all time, just because it's so easy to play games back to back and get yeah. get pulled out. Um, but You're yeah, also very good very, at this game. It it definitely is a game that you you, there, you know you get a <laughs> skill gap. And fortunately, like my my brother in law and I are pretty close, um, so like we can have really good games. It has a hmm. similar scoring thing to teach you, where only the winning um, team in a round scores or like. I guess it's a little different than teach you, but you can have rounds where you score, but the other team doesn't. So it's always that way in Crokinole. And what's cool about that is even if I get to 95 points, as long as you can win individual rounds, you can come all the way back yep. because, and so you never feel like it, you, you completely have the win or you're completely mm-hmm. out of it. It also means it's very unpredictable how long the game is going to be because you can True. have rounds where you just kind of zero out, but absolutely love Crokinole comes in at my 23. Awesome. My uh, 22 is a game we just talked about very recently. A game that I got first, you got second, and that is Wingspan. Moved up four wow. spots for me. Uh, I uh, agree with everything Ryan said, and there oh, you go. So that's so nice. uh, no, so, yeah, Wingspan, uh, just, again, so accessible. Um, it's beautiful. I'll really, I guess maybe I'll highlight that right now. It, I think it <coughs> draws people in because they look at it, they see the bird feeder, the cute dice, the boy. I mean, there is, I really do believe there's something to be said. If you make the game look just totally aesthetically pleasing, it's more inviting to new players. And I think that helps the experience. People are more interested. Uh, 
people if you like birds oh my gosh like this is you need to play this game because the the artwork of the birds it's got facts on the cards all wrapped up in an awesome uh interesting gameplay that uh is doesn't take super long but really adds some nice strategy yeah my 22 is wingspan wingspan there you go we're pretty similar on that one yep and that one's i mean that's like one of the most popular games yeah. in the whole industry rightfully in so years. yep all right 22 i think this was already on your list um it's one that we haven't played a lot um but it's we 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 love a lot of Uwe Rosenberg's big kind of farming simulators of these types of games that he makes. And there was a stretch of time where it was like every year he was coming out with one. And I'm like, we already have some that we enjoy. Like I wasn't even like really looking into them. But one that kind of over time I kept seeing popping up and eventually I was like, you know what? This actually looks pretty interesting what it does in this game. This is Howler Tau. And wow. it's one that um <laughs> really, I think, brings something different to the table that, like, I feel good about having it in my collection alongside some of my other favorite Uwe games. Um, But just this fascinating thing of you're trying to move the community center, but to do that, you have to move these other buildings by paying different resource combinations. I'm, like, trying not to have a coughing fit here. I might have (laughs) to cough and uh, drink here. (coughs) We do these in one take, man. It's rough. Yeah. Hey, we're grinding out here, man. We're grinding. <clears throat> okay, Howard Tell. I'm ready now. And so you're trying to move this this community center. I don't know how Uve comes up with this idea. It's like Who so kind of strange. <laughs> but you have to like, yeah, use your resources to like bump these other buildings that like to bump this one, you always have to pay more of this resource than this resource, and it's equal to like the round that we're in, and you have to get tools so you can move these rocks further down. But when it all comes together into the gameplay, it's so interesting and fun to try to figure out how you're going to get all the resources to try to move Mm -hmm. this as much as possible. And as you move it, you get more workers every round. And then on top of that, it has very similar to Feast for Odin, a bunch of little cards that aren't crazy abilities or anything, but are a bunch of little nudges of like, if you can get this thing, you're going to get this bonus or you'll get this production. And that's, you know, love that kind of stuff of just of the way you're on top of the strong game. And then I think you talked about just the core worker placement in that game is just a really fresh take on worker placement where, you know, you don't block a spot. It just makes it more expensive for the next person. Mm -hmm. And so that lots of interesting decisions out of that. I've really loved my place far really want to play it more because I haven't recently. Yeah. That is how or tell. I wow, I did not realize that was that high for you. That's I mean, I, it, I really I think it was it on well. my list last year. In fact, it was seven higher last year. Oh my gosh! Wow, dang. Okay, well, coming on, coming home here, Ryan. Uh, number twenty-one. I don't know if you realize or anyone realizes. To be honest, no one knows me mm-hmm. uh, how much I enjoy this game because I just don't get to play it that much. Uh, you've played it a few times with me, and that is Aeon's mm-hmm. End. Uh, drops. I've learned in recent years, I think, how much you actually. Really it dropped like. two spots for me. Oh my gosh! It just deli- It's like it's exactly <laughs> what I want. It's it like almost takes what everything I loved about like Dominion in like a you know these cards out that you're trying to kind of buy to um you know build this this deck, but combines it in a cooperative experience, which I just tend to love cooperative games where we're fighting this monster and it's hard, which I love. Mm -hmm. And this game delivers the perfect arc. It just like every game that I've played of it. And maybe I just haven't played it enough, but every game I've played, it like comes down to the final, Oh, can we pull it off? And maybe we just fall short or we make, we miraculously get it. Um, I find it is just such a, refined a deck builder cooperative uh there's i have i have the war eternal expansion as well so there's tons of variety with the cards that can come out um you're constantly you know i one thing i actually really like about it is the turn order where it's uh you know you've got a deck and so you're uh you you know kind of how the turner might you shuffle the deck and so it's randomized what order you know the nemesis could go two times in a row potentially but then as the deck goes on you start to know okay it's likely gonna be now you know us here or something like that i find that's really fresh and fun 
Uh, this game, for what it is, is just it's perfect for for me in that yeah. area. Uh, it's a it, I get so much joy out of it, uh, so much variety. Uh, it's just it, it for what it's trying to do. It's exactly what I'm looking for. So yeah. uh, there you go. Twenty one, a game I love. Aeon's End. Yeah, I've enjoyed my my couple of plays of Aeon's End. I think part of the reason I don't know like if it's a game I would ever be interested in getting is because I've played far enough apart that I usually have to kind of relearn it. Like yeah. I would love to get to play it when I feel like I already kind of know what's going on. Because mm-hmm. it's everything I love in a game like that where like when it's a single session, it's not like a campaign, and everything is like variable setup. It's like yeah. these this is the market of Char- cards, this is the nemesis you're buying. Nemesis cards all randomized yeah Yeah. so love that i'll I'll have to play it again sometime because it's it's holding for you please (laughs) all right i'm gonna get one more drink so i can maybe make it oh my gosh ryan come on the people are waiting i know i'm sorry sorry i just uh like to build suspense for my 21 yeah which is another game that falls into what i would say is that category of like Lots of different cards with effects, looking for combos, um, kind of an engine building thing. This is one I've had a lot of fun with recently. I've loved the couple of expansions I got for it. This is Res Arcana. And Res Arcana, it, where it, I think, is a little... There's a few things that kind of make it feel different to me from a Race for the Galaxy or Wingspan or some of these others that are kind of a similar feel. Uh, one is the heavy resource management, because you're actually getting essence and like producing it and then using these tokens to pay for things. There's kind of this whole resource management side to it. It's a race to 10 points. So it's like, you know, everything is how quickly can I get these points? But it's so unique in how you at the beginning of the game are going to draft your eight cards. And those are your eight cards. Like that's your deck. And it feels like that should feel limiting. (laughs) Like it, But it ends up being such a great puzzle of how you use these and which ones make sense to kind of get out to build that engine that can power you to 10 points. Um, The new expansion for it that adds these pearls and just some of the cards it adds in I think is great. Really low rules overhead, but a lot of cool stuff added into the game. I've had just really good plays of it at both kind of two and three players And, you know, it's so fun at the beginning of every game to do that draft of cards Mm -hmm. and be like, this is my deck that I'm going to work with this game. And while still playing in around an hour, um, it's just really one I'm glad to have my collection. It's made by Tom Lehman, designed by Tom Lehman, who did Race for the Galaxy. Yep. Um, So there's a little bit of his uh, stamp of his style on that, which we obviously enjoy a lot. Um, So that is my 21 up five spots from last that year that might be the most shocking one it, really i know i know you like it i just did not realize that well much. and i guess wow. i guess that makes sense because the majority of my plays have not been with you no i um, to be honest so that one didn't even make my list not because i haven't enjoyed it a couple times but i i still just don't know how i feel about it yet. yeah like i like i've liked it but i just feel like i need to play it more to really give a a stamp of of where it lands so yeah i've had the right group of a couple people that I've played repeatedly with, so we're not like reteaching the game. We're kind of just playing it. And yeah, so it's just really, you know, you have enough really good sessions of a game and it's just going to move it up your list. There you go. Ryan with his number 21, Res Arcana. And like we mentioned, we've got links to all of these games down below so you can check them out for yourself. And if you want to enter our contest where you can win one of the games on our list, make sure to enter the word bunnies down in the Google form we've got down below. You can enter once uh, each week. So listen for that clue word. And if you want to check out the next video in our top plays, whenever we have that uploaded, it'll be right here and you can check that out. I've got another video here, but we will see you in the next one.